<laughs> that was wicked. This has been the Dyson DCL3 Independent Absolute, the very final weak old school Dyson because the DCL1, DCL2 and the DCL3, they weren't powerful enough. The DCL4 onwards is when Dyson started to become proper vacuums. Right then guys, today I'm going to show you the Dyson DCL3, but this is a one-off DCL3, not one that exists anywhere else, to my knowledge anyways. It's a Dyson DCL3 absolute and independent vacuum. Now, the reason why it is the way it is, is because I had the Dyson DCL3 independent, you know, the white and silver one, and I converted it into an absolute. So this is the finished product. And I'm gonna give you a grand tour of the vacuum cleaner. Now, DCL3s look quite retro, don't they? They look very 90s. So I thought I'd just modernize the look of the Dyson DCL3 by adding a metallic silver finish body compared to the grey that they used to come with as a default. Dyson DCL3 was available from 1998 or 97. Well, they started manufacturing in 97. I don't know when they started launching them officially, but up until 2006, yes, 2006, this was the first slimline Dyson because as you can see, it's really wide at the front, but on the side, it's super thin. The USP of this Dyson was that it's extremely lightweight. Look how light it is. I'm lifting it with my pinky finger with no effort at all. 
in 2023, people will think, oh, that's big and heavy. And they would find it heavy because cordless. So this was the first slim Dyson before it got replaced by the DC-18 in 2006. Now, time for a grand tour then. So here's the cable. It's a very short cable. It wraps around the cable hooks four or five times. That's how short it is. But here's what the plug looks like. And the cable is also purple to match the vacuum color scheme. I've added every single detail as I could possibly do, apart from that, which is quite almost impossible to <laughs> remove without snapping. So this is your elegant looking tool storage on the side with all the tools that are equipped. So here you have the reversible wand adapter, which is only featured on certain DCO3s, like the Absolute and the Zorb. I'll show you what that's for in a bit. But you got a crevice tool, you got the stair tool. The stair tool, by the way, can be twisted so you can vacuum at different angles, such as a flat handheld angle. And even when you're using the wand, you can have it pointed upwards. And lastly, your dusting brush as well, which also has the swivel neck, so you can vacuum at different angles. And if you're wondering why, the accessories have an elongated neck. I'll show you what that's for in a moment. So this is the wand handle. These have the hugest wand caps I've ever seen. And the reason for that is because they could be hung up on a wall. Allow me to demonstrate. So you hook it up onto a hook, like so, and there you are. That's your Dyson hung up on the wall for easy storage. And obviously, yeah, you would push the head down as well to have it even more compact. And look how slim it is. This thing is so slim, it can go under beds. So to use your wand and hose, what you do is you first of all open the wand cap, push the purple catch on the front to release the wand. And there you have your wand and hose ready for use. This is the DC3 Absolute Hose, which I love because it's purple and then when you stretch it out, it becomes clear to see any blockages. These hose cuffs were available in that colour scheme, so that will do. Because on the DC3i, the independent one, this hose cuff was entirely white. So if you press the release button right here, you can then remove the hose cuff and then you can attach your desired tool of choice for use, such as a crevice tool. You can even attach your tool to the end of the wand like that. But if you don't like that the handle is so big and bulky at the end of the wand, what you can do instead is detach the wand. This works just like a DCI 7 in a way. So you attach your adapter tool, right? I like to twist this at an angle so it's even more comfortable to use. And then you can attach that to the end of the wand. So you have a lovely handle grip. And then you can attach your tools onto the end of the wand. And because the wand is so thin on DCI 1 and DCI 3 and the DCI 4, they started to widen the ones from the DCL7 onwards and that's why these tools wouldn't really fit unless it's the DCL3 version which has the elongated neck because further down in there it's actually designed to fit the DCL3 wand like so so it might not look like it fits when it actually does and that is how you can use your Dyson DCL3 with the one hose the tool storage even has pictures on the tool storage so you can see which tools go where this is a DC07 stair tool, by the way, in case you're wondering why it doesn't have the elongated neck. This is one of Dyson's most quirky vacuums of all time. They have what looks like a twin bin setup, when it's just one side, the standard bin and cyclone, but on the other side, you've got the filters. So you unlock the hose by pressing this button again to push the wand into the hose and then push it all the way home. Close your end cap and there you are. The unique change of valve design on the early Dysons, like the DCL1 and the DCL3, meant that the vacuum would not breathe at all from the wand or the head when the machine's in the upright position. Allow me to demonstrate. When I put it upright, no suction until I pull the wand out. So this is the release catch for the cyclone and bin that entire thing comes out. Then you push on this catch right here to separate the cyclone from the bin. And there you have your bin, ready to empty. Pop that back on. I like you can see the bin from the front, from the side, and from the rear as well. Especially when you're vacuuming stairs, you can just look back on your Dyson and see how much dirt you're picking up as you vacuum the stairs. Now the filters, some DCL3s have a replacement filter that you just change once every 12 months. Yes, 12 months, once a year because these were actually quite good at keeping the filters clean. Maybe that's because of the long but thin cyclone, which improves cyclone efficiency. To access your filters, this is the pre-motor filter, this is the post-motor filter. So you turn this ring right here to unlock your filters. This basically is just a circular ring that lifts up. Then what you do is you lift up on the clear casing and then the filter just slides out. There's your filter with the instructions telling you how to wash it. 
you can separate the core and it's a bit like a DC41 filter where you just wash it from here, give it a squeeze and just keep repeating. But in addition to that, you've got a HEPA as well, a pleated filter. I've got no doubts about this vacuum having one of the best filtration for its time because it actually had pretty incredible filtration with multiple fleet filters and multiple stages of filtration as well. My DCL3 that I had in the 2000s, it never actually had a washable filter. This core could not be separated. It was just one whole thing and you had to replace that once every 12 months. But that's what it says. It's got the antibacterial killing screen for any bacteria, how to wash it and such. And the pulse motor filter has a little handle which you lift up on in order to remove the filter. But because these are so flimsy, as you can see, they're prone to breaking off. But if I gave it a pull, there you are. That's the filter ready to be removed for replacement. But yeah, there's a nice thick gasket right here. You can see all the HEPA filtration in there. The filter is completely clean on the outside, but obviously on the inside, it's quite dirty. So yeah, fantastic HEPA filter. And down there is a the motor. And on the base, you got the brush bar, which is the exact same brush bar as a Dyson DCL4. It's a chevron design. So because the air comes at the center, it sweeps all the dust and dirt into the center, unlike any other Dyson. You got a swivel sole plate as well, just like the DCL1 had. And I'm gonna remove the sole plate so you can see what this looks like on the inside. So this is what it looks like. You can see the belt in a much more clearer access than the Dyson DCL4, 7, 14, 27, and 33. This was very, very user friendly. You could just really easily clean this out. You have more access to places. You can easily change the brush bar on this because there's so much more space to work with. And you've got a clear window on the front as well, which you can also remove for blockage access. So you can remove that, give it a good polish and check further inside for any blockages. And you can also remove the change oil valve by either pulling on this front tab or pushing on this. And then your change oil valve cassette thing pulls out. This is a bit similar to a Phantom Fury where it has this um, thingy bob. And then you can see right into the brush bar from the rear of the machine. This is such a quirky Dyson, isn't it? I mean, look at that. You can see my finger. You've got access to all sorts of areas where blockages can occur. And let's show you how this cassette thing works or the change oil valve. So obviously dirt goes through here from the cleaner head, right? So in the upright position, this is what it would look like. There's nowhere for airflow to go. The wand is sealed, so no air can go to the hose and no air can go to the head either because there's nowhere for the airflow to go to. But when you recline the machine, it opens up an airflow channel and that's how the air flows to the cleaner head. And when you pull the wand out and this is all blocked off, air can now go to the hose because it's no longer blocked by the wand. So the brush bar spins, all the dirt is swept to the center. The air goes all the way up, 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 up to about here. The dirt comes from out here into there and then spins around in a bin and cyclone. The air will then go through the purple shroud, spins around in the cyclone, exits the top out from this gasket right here. It then goes down here. This is like an S shape, so it goes down and then left and then down again out from there. The air is then filtered by the pre-motor filter, comes out the sides. It sits really high up from the base, so the air can then flow out from here. Then the air goes down this tube, directly all the way into the motor, and then the exhaust comes out from that opening right there. So it's forced through this filter, then it comes out, out through these vents, and that's how the air path on the DCL3 works. You got tons of filtration on this thing. So how many stages of filtration have we got? So stage one of filtration is the cyclone, which is the bin. Stage two is a shroud. Stage three is the second cyclone. Stage four, stage five, and stage six. And on the base, we've got a rubber flap, just like a DCL one for blackage access. So there's a serial number. As you can see, it says it's made in Malaysia, which obviously the late DCL threes were, the independent model especially. And lastly, you've got nice rubber coated wheels for added protection of your hardwood floors. So that has been the one off limited edition Dyson DCL three independent absolute vacuum cleaner. Hope you enjoyed this demonstration and overview. If you'd like to support my channel and see more vacuum cleaner content, be sure to subscribe, like, and comment. Thank you so much. Take care and I'll see you in my next video. Bye.